global warming. You might think of factories and cars that put out pollution and carbon dioxide, but that is not the real story. What about cows? Animal emissions may even be worse for climate change than car emissions. This is because they are not composed of carbon dioxide, but a different greenhouse gas, methane. Methane from the world's 3 billion cows, goats, and sheep warms the atmosphere more than all of the world's cars, planes, and ships combined. Our growing appetite for meat has made livestock production the largest source of man-made methane emissions, a significant cause of climate change. As strange as it may sound, getting cows to belch less may be one of the best ways to stop climate change. What if we could solve this agricultural challenge through aquaculture? Imagine a world where low methane beef is made possible by seaweed farming. How? Scientists at James Cook University recently discovered a type of red seaweed, which we are going to talk about today. Good day, I am Ira Kurizami and in this video, we are going to talk about the red algae Asparagopsis taxiformis, or commonly known as the Red Sea Plume. For the outline of what we are going to discuss, first its hierarchical organization and phylogeny, then we will describe its characteristics, morphology, distribution, as well as its properties and use. Asparagopsis taxiformis came from the genus Asparagopsis and is a red algae or from the phylum Rhodophyta, class Floridiopsii, order Bonemaisoniales, and family Bonemaisoniaceae. There is no much specific information about the phylogeny of our species or the genus of Asparagopsis, but here in the study of Yang et al. showing the phylogeny of the red algae based on empty genome data, it can be seen that eight taxiformes diverge from orders Gigartinales, Pesoneliales, Kelidiales, among others, from the subclass Rodimenio Pisidae. Another study of Mata et al. in 2017 shows different lineages of eight taxiformes along the Pacific and Great Barrier Reef. Since there is present domestication for commercial production, there is potential variation in growth and concentration of natural products between isolates of Asparagopsis, which is evident in their lineages. Now, we will talk about certain characteristics of our algae species. And in this picture, you can see the morphological structure of A. taxiformis. And to describe, it has an erectile or the plant is erect with much branched and tangled rhizome like gripping portion, giving a few rhizoids here and there below and above erect shoot. Appearing bushy and well-developed plant, it can be up to 13 cm high. You can see it in greenish to red in color, but for specific description, it can be dark brownish or purplish red. Also, it does look like a feather because of its plumose branch. These branches compose of numerous fine and delicate determinate branchlets, which are densely disposed around an axis. Moreover, it has many spores and its stem is purely cartilaginous. Other than that, they abscess to carbs that are subspherical or ovate. Next, this is a computer-generated native distribution map for A. taxiformis. It is found in both the tropics and subtropics, and common in all oceans. In Southeast Asia, it has been recorded in Burma, eastern coast of peninsular Malaysia, Philippines, and Papua New Guinea, or in the Indo-Pacific, Atlantic Ocean, and the Mediterranean. Notably, in the Philippines, it is listed in the updated checklist of the benthic marine macroalgae of the Philippines. Also, they are to be found at surfaces of reefs and boulders, and it is only hand-collected from natural populations by wading or diving. For growth and development, they exhibit the triphasic alternation of generations. In their case, both gametophytic and tetrasporophytic plants grow by means of dividing apical cells. Male and female propagational structures occur only rarely. Tetraspores in tetrasporophytes do not allow divide meiotically. When they do, they reproduce tetrasporophytes again. Fragments of tetrasporophytes often break off and can persist to form new plants. 
For their unique properties, a taxiformis produces unique toxins containing the noxious compound bromoform and many derivatives, as well as several halogenated acetones and halo alcohols. This alga is therefore not usually eaten by herbivorous fish or by sea urchins. Humans can eat this but should not consume it in large quantities. Interestingly, these red algae have many uses. The gametophytic plants of A. taxiformis are used as human food. The alga is considered a delicacy with penetrating flavor and taste and fragrance of iodine which develops when allowed to stand. Also, it is an excellent source of protein and is used for controlling goiter. Moreover, for animals it can serve as feeds and for plants it can be applied as fertilizer. Researchers also show that this alga can be used as antibiotic and antimicrobial. But aside from this, the most important reason why this algae should be one of your favorites because believe it or not, it can be a solution to climate change. A. taxiformis, it has natural properties that stop methane production in the guts of ruminant animals. Simply switching 2% of a cow's diet with taxiformis seaweed could almost wholly stop enteric methane production. Research has shown that it is safe for animals and may even improve their health. However, ruminants need a lot of food, so we need much seaweed to feed 3 billion animals. To come up with ways to grow a taxiformis, the first step is to make sure we have a healthy supply of seed stock. To do this, researchers are working with the world's top seaweed expert to close the life cycle, make the baby plants reproduce, and tie them to ropes to be raised on farms. Then, they will develop scalable ways to grow seaweeds in tanks on land and on the ocean, combining seaweed and barramundi fish farming to make sure the system is good for the environment. Finally, they will try a large-scale seaweed farming because it could also help fight ocean acidification and rebuild habitats while giving coastal communities more power through regenerative aquaculture through algae.